Hey guys, Zot here, and welcome to another video. In today's video, we're going to be covering the best corruptions for PvP in patch 8.3. If you're unsure about how corruption works, or what corruptions there are in the game, then be sure to check out our previous video explaining the corruption system in depth. We're going to be ranking these corruptions in tiers when it comes to PvP, and giving you the lowdown on why they're good or bad. So let's get started. First up, and without a doubt the strongest corruption for all classes in the game right now, we've got Gushing Wounds, an easy spot for our S tier. Gushing Wounds is a damage dealing corruption that can be used by every spec. Essentially what it does is apply a bleed to a target that deals damage over 7 seconds. This has a very high proc chance which scales with haste, and the dot applied is physical and can critical strike. This is especially good on dot classes as it can easily be applied to multiple targets at once due to the high chance of it having to proc. Bear in mind this corruption scales with item level, so you ideally want it on a high level piece. Okay, so what makes Gushing Wounds just so strong? Well, first it's just the raw damage to corruption value this corruption puts out. Here we can see a screenshot of a details game where we have rank 2 infinite stars compared to a Gushing Wounds. One cost 50 corruption, one cost 15. Due to Gushing Wounds ridiculously low corruption cost, you can wear an absurd amount of it. Not only that, this is the only damage dealing corruptions that has no drawbacks at all. What I mean by this is there is no counterplay. It can't be dispelled, it can't be purged, there is no way to stop the damage it deals. The low corruption cost, high damage, the ability to combine with other corruptions or even stack multiple of, and no drawbacks makes this our number one corruption for all classes by far. But good luck getting multiple pieces as this seems to be incredibly rare. Next up, still in our S tier, we've got Infinite Stars. Infinite Stars has 3 ranks, giving 20, 50 and 75 corruption accordingly. How this essence works is that your target has a chance to be hit by stars, dealing arcane damage and leaving a stacking debuff that increases all subsequent damage from this effect by 25% stacking up to 10, so 250% increase at 10 stacks. Despite receiving multiple nerfs, Infinite Stars still remains in our S tier, solely down to the damage this is capable of. Infinite Stars also, like Gushing Wounds, scales not only from the tier of corruption, but also the level of the item it's on, meaning you're ideally wanting it on a 460 plus item. Now, this corruption is easily able to deal upwards of 100k crits even when on moderate stacks. So, why isn't this essence rated at number 1 if it's capable of such high numbers? Well, Infinite Star's number 1 drawback is that the stacking debuff increase in its damage is actually dispellable. So, if a healer is consistently dispelling stacks, its damage is going to be limited, on top of how RNG it is. Altogether, Infinite Stars is a stellar corruption for when you can't get multiple gushing wounds, and is great for both casters and melee alike. And still in our S tier, we've got Twisted Appendage up next. Twisted Appendage give your attacks a chance to spawn a tentacle, dealing damage to your target for 10 seconds. Again, similar to Infinite Stars, this has 3 tiers, giving 15, 35 and 66 corruption, scaling with the level of the item it's on. So ideally, again, you're looking for a high level item piece. It's also worth noting that stacking this corruption will only increase the damage of the tentacles. The tentacles from Twisted Appendage cast Mind Flay onto your target, similar to the old Shadow Priest artifact ability if you can remember that. They deal good damage and have a good proc rate. They didn't have their damage nerfed when inside of instance PvP. However, Twisted Appendage is not without its drawbacks, the major one being just how easy it is to kill. Tentacles when they spawn have 10% of your maximum health so are relatively easy for almost all classes to one shot. They also count as kills, so grant enemies with buffs like Victory Rush for Warriors and Dark Sakaur for Death Knights. These tentacles can also be line of sighted if you're playing near a pillar. The tentacles, as long as enemies are in line of sight, have a very long range though, making them good for all specs and roles. And our last corruption going into the S tier is specifically for monks and demon hunters. This is because it's a unique corruption coming from a fist weapon inside of the newly added raid Nihilo for the Waken City, from the boss Ra Den. This fist weapon gives 25 corruption on all levels, and deals damage based on your attack power. Similar to Gushing Wounds, from the corruption cost, this proc deals very high damage, 
and also slows enemies, making it especially strong on demon hunters. High burst damage, low corruption cost, high proc chance, and even an attached slow. It doesn't get much better than this for monks and demon hunters. Oh, and enhanced shamans if you're a masochist. Dropping down a tier now, our next corruption is going to be the much famed Echoing Void. Probably everybody who's played recently has seen the impact this had in its unnerved form, doing upwards of 20% of your overall damage for anybody luckily enough to get this. However, Echoing Void works in a way that every ability you use grants a stack with no duration. When gaining one of these stacks, you have a chance to collapse and then release all of the stacks, dealing shadow damage in percent health split between all targets around you in a 15 yard radius. Echoing Void scales from your percent health, although recently Echoing Void was hit with the nerf bat, not only having its percent health value nerfed, but also having its damage in PvP scenarios reduced by half, with the stats also now being purgeable, which is why we now see this in our A tier. Despite that, this still remains to deal decent damage, but due to its 15 yard range, it's going to be a lot stronger for melee. This corruption really isn't worth it as a caster, even if you're getting trained. There are just much better options out there for you. Now, I'm not too sure about the dispel portion of this. It's almost like it actually benefited the corruption for PvP, as it just makes a trash debuff that's up 100% of the time, so could easily see some niche uses that way. And our next corruption going in at our A tier is Twilight Devastation. Again, one of the stronger ones on release, but now heavily tuned. Twilight Devastation deals percent max health damage, similar to Echo in Void, so item level doesn't matter for this corruption. Although, instead of splitting damage, anybody hit with this takes 100% of the damage, and trust me, it hits hard, even after the nerf. Why this is so low on the list though is due to the randomness of this corruption's proc rate combined with its short range and how easy for it is to miss on targets due to its zigzagging trajectory. Again though, this is one that's going to be better for melees, as having this as a caster and facing other casters with its 30 yard range isn't going to do much, and there are just better choices out there for casters. And our last corruption going into our A tier is the percent stat increases. These corruptions increase a stat you gain from all sources, ranging from 6% all the way to 12%. There is haste, versatility, mastery, critical strike, and even a percent to crit damage and healing. But mainly, we're talking about haste, mastery, and versatility. Why these are so good is that they passively increase the stat you gain from all sources. What this means is that anything that increases the rating of that stat is also increased. So things like Flashpoint for Warlock, for example, that give a set number of haste rating will be greatly increased. Obviously though, you'll need the preferred stat for this corruption to be good, but nonetheless, it's a solid choice, especially for those classes that like to stack one stat or rely heavily on versatility to survive, for instance. Dropping down to our bottom tier, we've got a corruption everybody should know, as it's the first corruption everybody gets baseline, Void Ritual. Void Ritual gives your spells and abilities a chance to increase all secondary stats by either 7, 17 or 32, depending on what tier it's in. The chance for this to proc also increases if you have two allies using it, so good luck convincing your friends to use this one, as this is one of the weakest corruptions by far, having a low proc rate, high corruption cost and generally low stat gain. You're far better off getting a percent stat increase. Although this is the starter corruption, so if it's the best you've got, then it's still usable by all classes. Our last corruption making it onto this tier list is going to be the proc stat increases. Similar to the percent stat increases, this again comes in versatility, critical strike, mastery and haste, ranging from 15 to 35 corruption and varying lengths and amounts. Overall, this is just a lot weaker than the passive stat increases. But again, if it's the correct stat, this isn't bad by any means. More so just overshadowed by the stronger damage procs on the list. Alright then guys, that's going to be it for our best corruptions for PvP in 8.3 video. Bear in mind, these corruptions are incredibly volatile right now, so this list could change overnight. But as always, we'll be sure to keep you up to date. Thanks for watching.